Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, everybody. Here we are with Dr. Liz Lister and my great partner, John Coleman. Hi, well, Liz. Good to see you. Doing, you. How are you doing, John? I, you know, I, you, you I'm and I never great. get to speak except on Mondays. <laughs> I'm doing great, Art. I see you all the time. We don't get to see Dr. Liz right. half as often. So, Dr. Liz, I, I, as we, as Art and I talk about aging, and because um, we're celebrating Act Two, we're celebrating our senior years, our second half of our life. Um, this topic, you, you can't have two guys get together and the topic not somewhere reach uh, the level of sexual innuendo. So we were talking about John, libidos. John, you mean reach. Oh, re reach down <laughs> to sexual. <laughs> Depends on your age, I guess. Right. But we were, we were talking about how libidos change with age. Um, and I'll keep it that generic, okay, Art? Yeah. But um, we, we've talked, Dr. Liz, we've talked with you about um, how hormones change with age, how um, age is, you know, our age does affect our libido. Um, but I guess what we've never talked about is how do you get it back? Mm. <laughs> That's what I want to know. How do you get it back? Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. As you mentioned, we've definitely talked about the hormones that change over time, usually declining as we get older. And just to quickly recap for our listeners, the main hormones, especially for women that affect libido are estrogen and testosterone, as well as DHEA, which is made by the adrenals, and oxytocin. The good news about oxytocin is that it gets released from activities that we do. When we get to bond with each other, it's called the bonding hormone. So I love talking about it. However, it works better in the presence of estrogen. So as we as women get older and our hormone levels decline and we go through menopause and then we end up with really low levels of estrogen and testosterone, sometimes DHEA, we can then uh, really have issues uh, in terms of libido. And I always like to remind everyone that libido is not only about sex. It's about motivation and drive. It encompasses all of those areas. And it's really uh, an essential part of us feeling good and feeling motivated in our lives. And, and if you're a woman, we're talking about uh, female libido. And, and feeling like a woman. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which is a perfect segue into, we're, we're going to talk about, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, natural ways. In addition to safe ways of replenishing the hormones, which we've talked about on several occasions, there are also natural ways to improve our libido, especially for us as women. And one of them on my short list is what I call get in your body. A lot of times, I, I, I don't know, you guys can tell me if men do this, but we women spend a lot of time critiquing what we look like in the mirror. We don't like how things are changing as we get older. Uh, I know for myself now in my 50s and with my eyesight changing, I spend a lot more time looking in the close-up mirror, which I got to tell you, I don't enjoy that much, but <laughs> I got to do it. And so, so a lot of times we do sort of, uh, if I could describe it, like we kind of carry our body around like it's a sack over our shoulder, as opposed to something like exercise or massage or a pedicure, all kinds of ways to reconnect with our bodies and feel like we're actually in our bodies, as opposed to critiquing it from the outside. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, it does. It does. Yeah. And I, as a general rule, at least in my circles, uh, the guys I know, we don't talk about that kind of stuff much at all. Um, right. In other words, to one another to say, hey, uh, uh, you've got a little bit of phlegm over there. I mean, other than kidding each other at the gym or something uh, on a very minute basis, it's not the kind of thing that at least most of the people in my circle dwell on. And there's yeah. plenty of criticisms that we could give to one another. 
But what about you, John? Well, you know, the multi-billion dollar industry of the beauty industry is yeah. not aimed at you guys. It's aimed at us. Right. Well, right. Yeah, how, how, do you, how do you improve upon perfection? That's what John and I always say. <laughs> but but you, you said that there's natural ways. You mentioned yes. a couple. Are there other natural ways for women to increase their libido? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, here's my number one favorite is sleep. Oh, wow. Good quality, consistent sleep. Especially for us women, we cannot have good libido, good sexual response and motivation when we are tired. As a friend of mine says, who leads workshops for women, she says, you cannot do this on caffeine. <laughs> you have to be genuinely feeling good and feeling rested in order to want to be intimate with your partner to to feel like it yeah what else besides sleep it it, it seems to me libido is well we know libido is very psychological i mean it's not just a physical with the hormones it's it's also in your head the biggest sex organ they say is your brain Absolutely. There also, also uh, uh, could there be other contributing factors? Uh, and again, just the wonderful thing about our conversations is that you bring up things that either we haven't thought about in a long time or we never even knew. But let's say you talk about sleep. Uh, have there been studies that say, well, if you drink coffee and that keeps you awake or you have too much caffeine from uh, uh, soft drinks and things like that, are those things that could have seriously affect how people feel? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. General state of health is very, very important. Healthy diet, that, that sort of thing. That, that applies for men and women. Definitely, no question about it. So sleep and uh, getting into your body and also prioritizing, especially prioritizing intimacy. So for women, so particularly to the point of libido for sex, uh, women, we as women have to prioritize it. A lot of times when we're dealing with raising children, they're taking a lot of our time and attention. And it's time, especially as we find things changing, we find the kids, hopefully, God willing, leaving the house, growing up and launching, that we have to reprioritize that intimacy with our partners. So that's also on my short list of these non not the hormones themselves but the mindset and the other ways that we can uh, approach our lives so that we support having a really nice good healthy libido yeah um those seem very important because it is a a conscious decision um, exactly to do these things whether you're looking for more sex or whether you just want to feel better. That's exactly right. You got it. Yeah. And there's a bonus. I have a bonus one for women. Okay. This is really interesting. You gentlemen might find this very, very interesting. So the usual model that's been understood for sexual drive and sexual function is, is that desire has to come first. Okay. That's the old, the Masters and Johnson, who were the first pioneers to even study and describe this, and desire was the first step. However, and it's kind of linear. So desire leading to arousal, leading to ready physically, and then leading to intimacy and the sexual act. Whereas it turns out, and this is more recent research that I think is really fascinating, that it's a little, it's more circular for women as opposed to a linear model, it's a more circular model in ways that, for example, the touching part can then lead to desire in the right setting. There's so many requirements for us women. Sorry, guys, we have to feel, <laughs> we have to feel rested. We have to feel safe. Okay, there's a lot more to talk about with that. But my point that for our listeners is just to kind of a new way of thinking about this. And I love talking about this with women because it's very eye-opening, okay? That once things kind of get rolling, that then the desire will follow. Yeah. 
Um, now, because this is kind of a, a psychological side of the libido that we're talking about now, um, it attitude is really important. You you can, if you have a negative attitude for some reason, whatever the reason is, uh, you can put the kibosh anywhere on this circle or timeline. Absolutely. You can, you can stop the process. But yes. if you have a good attitude, then it almost doesn't matter where you are on the circle or the timeline you can move to the next step. Um, yeah. And we, we know, I for agree. instance, that, that um, for some people, uh, a verbal expression can be very arousing, can be very suggestive, and can, be, can work. For other people, it needs to be physical, as you mentioned, touching. Um, so the, the, the psychological and the attitude is really important, I think. Absolutely. I think we could have another talk another time about the love languages. Oh, yeah. That's such a fun topic. I love, I wrote a blog about it recently. It's just a fun, fun topic. You, you made me think of that just now because touch for some people is essential. And for other people, it's just nice, but not essential. For other people, it's words of encouragement or maybe it's just, just spending time with them. So you made me think of the love languages. So we should talk about that another time. We should. And in fact, we're scheduled to talk to Michelle Fabrega about the same subject. Oh, fantastic. Your, your old pal. Absolutely. She's great. Yeah. That's great. So have we missed anything before we say goodbye? Uh, Probably uh, about a half hour's more discussion, but I think we're going to save it. <laughs> to well, you know what? Next time, next time, let's talk about uh, having helping men increase their libido. Do you have 30 Absolutely. seconds? Absolutely. Do you have 30 <laughs> seconds? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Liz. My pleasure. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.